All right, so the uh, different sedimentation methods have one last ace up their sleeves. So we're going to discuss it, the density equilibrium sedimentation. And then we're going to tackle some questions that I've seen in past papers, some that people told me that they had, and actually made a few maybe more difficult. So if you can answer these questions, and even if you can't, you'll see the right answer. Your chances will skyrocket <laughs> when you're handling whatever questions in regards to sedimentation. So density equilibrium sedimentation, and we already drew this a bazillion time, this, this vial here. And now what I'm going to do is some elements, and I'm not going to get to the chemistry of it, but some elements like cesium chloride, we have the ability to have them, to have them present in this vial through some sort of process in different density gradients. And what I mean different density gradients is I can actually build, build layers here in this vial where maybe this is going to be very, 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 very dense. Cesium chloride, maybe this is going to be slightly less dense. This is, this is going to be not very dense. This is going to be very, very, or rather, the least dense of all. So we have different gradients of density. Different gradients of density are created here. And what we're going to do is now we're going to place particles. We're going to place particles in the, in the solution, and we're going to let them sediment under centrifugal force. And the thing is that different particles have different size, shape, and density, and they're going to sediment at their own density, at their own density uh, gradient level here. That means that if I have a certain molecule A, that its density, its density is the same as the density gradient here. It's going to slowly, it's going to slowly sediment until it gets here, and then it's going to settle here and stay. And maybe, maybe this molecule here. Molecule B has the has a gradient density that's very very dense, just like this gradient. So this density, being that it's the same density as its environment here, is going to sediment and get to here. So basically, molecule is going to sediment according to their density. They're going to sediment according to their density. They basically want to, they're most comfortable when the surrounding is just like they are, like most people. They want to be in a surrounding that they know that they're familiar with. So they're going to sediment according to their own density. And in this way, we can, we can actually, we can actually uh, discriminate according to size, to size, shape, and density, and density. And it's really important to know that this uses a density gradient, density gradient. We're mentioning pH gradient for isoelectric focusing and density gradient for the density equilibrium sedimentation. And it's, it's nice to know cesium chloride. You don't really need to know its name or what it does. But it's nice to know these abbreviations just in case you're asked. And the reason that I put this density equilibrium sedimentation uh, topic here right before the Q&A is because if we scroll down to our questions, the first question features maybe, maybe that. So I've actually given you something to think about. I really would like you to pause this video now so you can work on these essay questions. All right. So I'm assuming you went through the questions, and we're going to do so now. And maybe you've noticed, what kind of sedimentation method can be used for the determination of the density of a particle? And a classic, and a classic example would be the sedimentation, the density sedimentation equilibrium that we've just reviewed. And basically, if I had to explain it in an open essay question, I would say that some materials like cesium chloride can create a uh, density gradient in uh, an environment in which we can place particles to sediment, and they're going to sediment according to their density. And they're going to come to a rest at, this, at the density gradient that is complementary to their own density. And in that way, we can gain some ideas to the size, shape, and density. Very good. So next up, in a sedimentation equilibrium experiment, uh, what is that? In a sedimentation equilibrium experiment, why are all the particles not concentrated at the bottom of the tube? Which is a good question. Uh, all right, let's talk about classic sedimentation. We're applying lots of force, and now these guys are all sedimenting to the ground, and they're collecting here. Now, in a sedimentation equilibrium, what we're doing is that we're actually applying centrifugal force, but not to a great extent. We're applying a centrifugal force to a lesser extent. And then at that point, a particle can actually undergo centrifugal, or rather, some sort of mobility until it gets to a point where the diffusion force is being balanced 
by the centrifugal force and it's not moving anymore. And at this point, at this point, this uh, is a sedimentation equilibrium because this event features a particle that is not moving due to, due to forces that are in fact at equilibrium. And it's good to know that these are, and it's good, it's essential to know that the, this, these are the diffusion and sedimentation forces that are at equilibrium. So this is the explanation of why they are not all collected at the bottom of the tube. Because the centrifugal force in sedimentation equilibrium is not as strong as in sedimentation velocity. All right. And this, this, is a, this one is a very, this one down below here is a very classical question. Explain briefly the forces acting on a particle undergoing sedimentation. And what I would do is I would actually make a little drawing because it, it looks kind of cool. And maybe it lets the professors know that you know what you're talking about. And I would say this is, this is the centrifugal force. I'd, I'd label this centrifugal force. I would say this one is the friction. I would say this one is the buoyancy. Very good. And if this is new to you, maybe you'd want to review the first video that has, uh, that has the information in it. So let's, let's finish off. Let's finish off with some true or false questions here. How many do we have? This is it. So let's finish off with these questions. And I would really like you to pause this video now and take your time and try to figure these out. So pause the video now. All right. Let's see what we have here. Let's see what we have here. Hopefully I'll get those right as well. The rate at which a particle will sediment is linearly proportional to the form factor. And really what we need to know, and this, this should be intuition, um, a particle would be, would be able to go faster, and the rate of sedimentation is really how fast is it going. It's going to be able to go faster the smaller it is. If it's a really fat molecule, it's going to have more interactions that are going to, to maybe not allow it to go as fast as if it were smaller. So the form factor, when the form factor really goes up, what we're saying is, uh, the radius goes up, maybe the viscosity goes up. So when the form factor goes up, the rate, the rate of sedimentation would go down. So the form factor is inversely proportional to the rate of sedimentation. I would actually write here sedimentation velocity, really, because it's the same relationship. The rate at which a particle will sediment is linearly proportional to the form factor. That is false. That is false. It is inversely proportional to the form factor. Let's keep this train going. In sedimentation equilibrium method, the diffusion force is greater than the centrifugal force allowing it to come to a rest. And we already mentioned that we have a particle that is at rest or it's at its equilibrium. The diffusion force and the centrifugal force are, are balanced. So if they're balanced, it is not possible for the diffusion force to be greater. It's not going to happen. So this is also false. All right, the sedimentation velocity is inversely proportional to the sedimentation coefficient. And here what we're saying is the, the, the rate at which the particle sediments. It's not really the sedimentation velocity method. So we're saying the sedimentation velocity is inversely proportional to the, sediment, the sedimentation coefficient. And for this, we really need to know this little thing that we had before, that we had before, where this, this here is the sedimentation sed for sedimentation velocity. And this is the um, centrifugal, centrifugal force. Very good. Because it's centrifugal velocity as well. Centrifugal velocity. Very good. And because this is angular momentum and radius. So really, this is what we mean here. And if you take a look, just take a look at this for a second and see if you can figure it out. See if you can figure it out. The centrifugal acceleration, it's, it's practically more, it's better to say acceleration here, just, just to keep to the physics. I like being pedantic. Centrifugal acceleration. Centrifugal acceleration here at this point versus the sedimentation velocity at this point. Now what they're asking is very simple. What they're asking is very simple. The sedimentation velocity, this thing, is inversely proportional to the sedimentation coefficient. And just by looking at it, it doesn't make sense. Because if this goes up, this would also go up. So they're linearly proportional. They're linearly proportional. Sedimentation velocity is linearly, linearly proportional to this, this sedimentation coefficient. Basically what it says is that when, I, when, my, when my particle sediments faster, it has a, a more 
were larger sedimentation coefficient. False. Hopefully this makes sense. Really hopefully. All right. During the sedimentation velocity method, and now we're talking about the method itself, the sedimentation velocity of a particle undergoing sedimentation is equal to zero. And really you're thinking about it. You're thinking about it and you're saying, hey, this particle, it's coming to a rest. So it mu it's, its sedimentation velocity must be zero. And when you're thinking about it, it's incorrect because it had to sediment. It had to sediment to get there. And really what they're meaning here at this point is there only one sedimentation method where the, where the sedimentation velocity is zero. And if I draw this a bazillionth time, what sedimentation method allows two forces to balance each other out and the particle not moving? There's only one, and that's the sedimentation equilibrium, the sed -ec sedimentation equilibrium method. And this really means that when these two forces are balanced, this particle is not going to be moving across this, this uh, um, vial here. So its sedimentation velocity is going to be equal to zero. And that, that only occurs when we're talking about the sedimentation equilibrium. Otherwise, it would sediment all the way down and would be associating with some sort of, some sort of sedimentation velocity. So during the sedimentation velocity method, the sedimentation velocity of a particle undergoing sedimentation is equal to zero. I would fix it to say sedimentation equilibrium method if I wanted to fix it. So this would be a false. We're all false by now. Let's see if there's something true here. Let's see if there's something true. So <clears throat> let's see. I'll do pink now. The electrophoretic mobility of a particle is inversely proportional to its charge and linearly proportional to the form factor. All right, they're getting cutesy here. So let's see what we have here. Electrophoretic mobility. So really, electrophoretic mobility is how fast would a particle be able to move. It's just the velocity gained by a particle when introduced to an electric field. And let's uh, see the charge. So if we have a very, very charged particle, and we have the same size particle, and it's not very charged, this particle is going to really want to get to a negative side. It's going to really shoot forward, but this one is going to slowly migrate. So the electrophoretic mobility is linearly proportional to charge. And what I mean by that is the mobility, when mobility and charge, I'm going to put them one next to the other because this is what I do. When charge goes up, mobility goes up. And this is a linear relationship. So the electrophoretic mobility of a particle is linearly proportional linear proportional to its charge. Usually they'd stop here, but for some reason they kept going, maybe because they wanted to confuse you a little bit more, and linearly proportional to the form factor. Well, let, let's analyze this as well, just because we can. Form factor basically means that if I have a molecule that's really big and a molecule that's not as big, and they have the same charge, this one is going to be able to move a lot easier than this big one. So for this one, the form factor is greater than this one, really. This form factor is greater for this molecule. So if I say, if I put mobility here, because it's easier for me to look at it this way, in form factor, let's just do 1F. Form factor goes up, I have a fat molecule, the, the mobility goes down. So this would also be true, be false, be false. So this would also be false. So this whole thing is false. I really hope that you gain some sort of intuition and insight to uh, sedimentation methods just using these questions. I found it really easy to uh, gain some intuition using questions. So hopefully you found this helpful. See you in the next.